hello dear friends welcome to my youtube channel mukesh english in this video i'm going to talk about the model question paper of third semester bsc bca generic english and the bangalore university and bangaluru north university i have extracted this model question paper from the textbook of third semester bsc bca generic english published by prasaranga bangalore university examination for 60 marks duration 2 hours 30 minutes the first section of this question paper consists 30 marks that is for the short play pygmalion by george bernard shaw under this we have the section 1 answer any five questions in one of the two sentences each question is for two marks question number 1 who was whiskers whiskers was the pupil of professor higgins what was napomak doing the at the reception answer he is a guest at the ambassador's reception fluent in many languages and says that he is an expert he claims eliza is a fraud and she is really a princess question number 3 why did the presence of napomak frighten mr pickering napomak recognizes higgins and brags about his ability of being able to place any man in europe by the sole virtue of his pronunciation this worries pickering who is afraid that napomak might sniff out eliza's origins and blackmail her question number 4 whom does napomak think eliza was answer a princess question number 5 what claim did the note taker make with respect to language the note taker could identify the native of the person from the person's dialect or his or her dialect question number 6 who were the note taker and the gentleman answer the note taker was professor higgins and the gentleman uh, was uh, uh, there's a spelling error gentleman was colonel pickering <coughs> question number 7 why had the flower girl come to meet mr higgins eliza had come to see professor higgins to take lessons from him <coughs> now the question number uh, the section number 2 where section 2 when you need to answer any two questions each question is for two marks what was mr higgins opinion on women and marriage answer pickering questions if higgins is a man of good character where women are concerned higgins admits that he has never known how to deal with women because the moment you let a woman into your life she becomes jealous exacting suspicious and a damned uh, nuisance furthermore he says the moment he becomes friends with a woman with a woman he becomes selfish and tyrannical thus he is a confirmed old bachelor and plans to remain one and he assures pickering that he will not take advantage of eliza question number 2 how is Miss, mrs pierce's assessment of mr higgins contradiction to his own assessment answer mrs pierce provides a way into the drama and its characters for the audience she gives us a little glimpse beneath the surface of other characters in the play especially henry higgins it is through mrs pierce that the contradictions of higgins complex personality are revealed mrs pierce provides a way into the drama and its characters for the audience she gives us a little glimpse beneath the surface of other characters in the play especially henry higgins it's through mrs pierce that the contradictions of higgins complex personality are revealed now question number 3 question number 3 write a note on the relationship between eliza and mr dolittle answer in the act 2 of pygmalion eliza tells mrs pierce that she has no parents her father and sixth stepmother turned her out to earn her own way later her father alfred dolittle shows up at mr higgins home to see what he can get from handing eliza over to the professor after all he asks if liza is going to have a bit out of this why not me too 
He describes Eliza as a fine, handsome girl, but as a daughter, she is not worth her keep. He clearly has no interest in her well-being and accepts a five-pound note in exchange for leaving her without a fuss. His last advice to Mr. Higgins is, if you want Eliza's mind improved, Governor, you do it yourself with a strap. After he leaves, Eliza says she never wants to see her father again and she continues, he is a disgrace to me. He is. In the Act 5, Doolittle shows up again, this time at the home of Mrs. Higgins. He has come into an inheritance and too intimidated to reject his newfound wealth. He has joined the upwardly mobile middle class. Eliza is unaware of his presence when she comes downstairs to confront Mr. Higgins and Mr. Pickering, allowing Doolittle to see the lady she has become and to witness Higgins' coarse treatment of her. She hears Higgins curse her and asserts that she will relapse into the gutter in three weeks without me at her elbow. Bernard Shaw writes that, with a look of dignified reapproach at Higgins, Mr. Doolittle comes slowly and silently to his daughter. A guarded reconciliation, reconciliation follows. Eliza agrees to attend the wedding of her father and stepmother. Doolittle further redeems himself when, in a quiet aside with Pickering, he admits that he had shielded Eliza from the fact that he had not been married to her mother and will continue to do so. Question number four. Why, according to Mr. Doolittle, did he deserve five, point, five pounds? <clears throat> an undeserving poor man, according to Doolittle, an undeserving poor man has, a, has as much right to go on a drunken binge as he as does a deserving poor man. Furthermore, if they will give him some money, he will promise to spend it all on a drunken bench immediately and will thus be broke and ready for work on Monday morning. The originality of this idea and the audacity and the impudence with which it is put forward causes Higgins and Pickering to yield to do, to do little's request. And they even offer him 10 pounds, but Doolittle refuses because it would involve him in responsibilities. He can't drink up 10 pounds in the weekend, but he can drink up 5 pounds. So he deserves 5 pounds. Question number 5. What were Miss, Mrs. Higgins' concerns with respect to Eliza? After the Innsford Hills leave, Higgins is exhilarated about Eliza's performance, but his mother points out that Eliza is not yet presentable. That is, Eliza is merely triumph of your art and of her dressmakers. But that she reveals her social origins in every sentence that she speaks. Mrs. Higgins repeatedly rebukes Higgins for his lack of manners and his surely behavior towards a guest and for it for his lurzy habits of stumbling into furniture and is very reluctant to have him in front of a company. This act also reveals middle class civility for what it really is something dull and uninspiring. Now, the section three of this play you need to answer any one questions of the following questions, and each question is for 10 marks. Now, this, here you need to answer the questions in one of the two pages. Question number one. Discuss Eliza's transformation in the play Pygmalion. In the play Pygmalion, Henry Higgins is Shaw's Pygmalion and Eliza Doolittle is his Galatia. Or Galatia. Henry Higgins teaches Eliza how to speak proper English and shapes her to fit into the middle class morality from a gutter, from, from a gutter snip. Just as Pygmalion creates a beautiful statue from an ugly piece of rock. While this transformation of Eliza is in process, 
Higgins uses many phonetical instruments such as a phonograph, a uh, laryngoscope, a row of tiny organ pipes with his billows and a set of lamp chimneys for singing flames for burners, etc. Before Eliza first encounters Mr. Higgins, she has been simply a dirty yet caring girl. During her time with both Mr. Higgins and Colonel Pickering, Eliza did change. For the first few weeks of her stay in the Wimpole Street, she questions everything that Higgins asked her to do and generally could not see how they would help her. Later, Eliza begins to understand that Higgins, as harsh as he is, trying to do his best to teach her and therefore should be respected. After the ambassador's ball, we see more of the old Eliza resurfacing. Eliza's basic character remains relatively unchanged. Act 1 of the play first introduces the reader to the rich of London. The author Bernard Shah uses these well-moneyed citizens to display the contrast between them and Eliza. It becomes apparent that she is very poor and needs success from her flower selling to live a life at all. Eliza shows great pride in her line of work and that she stays above the law, not resorting to illegal prostitution or stealing. Another way that Bernard Shaw shows us the real Eliza is in the way that she starts crawling over the dirty ground to locate the money thrown down at her by Higgins. She now realizes that she can ask Mr. Higgins to help her fulfill her dreams and become a lady in a flower shop, an occupation for which she is not visually or phonetically suited. When Eliza first comes to Higgins to learn how to speak properly, Professor Higgins asks her to leave immediately and even asks Colonel Pickering, shall we ask this baggage to sit down or shall we throw her out of the window? Because she asks, co she, so because she speaks Cockney and does not know how to behave properly. She's a squashed cabbage leaf, as Professor Higgins describes her. But finally, after training Eliza for three months, she decide, she, they decide to try out her improvement and takes her to Mrs. Higgins' house, where she proved that she has learned to speak properly, but at the same time, she has not learned what and what is not to talk about. She even uses the word bloody when Freddie asks her if she would like to walk across a park. In Higgins' study at the start of the Act 2, Eliza feels that she has to impress Higgins by making sure he knows that she arrived in a taxi. Eliza does not understand the way that Mr. Higgins treats people. She quite rightly gets very upset when Henry Higgins rambles on about money and wanting to throw the baggage out of the window. Eliza shows little emotion towards a wager set by Pickering and she merely thanks him for offering the pay for the lessons. She realizes that she can only accomplish her dream of working as a lady in a flower shop. Higgins can shape her into a lady. Higgins did change Eliza. Originally, she was a kind of innocent girl trying to stay alive in the gutter of London. She is merely a tool used to enhance Higgins' reputation in society. Now, at the end of the play, she becomes overpowering to Higgins. Her beauty becomes murderous as Higgins realizes that she is leaving. He is portrayed at the end as an ignorant fool when even after all is said and done, he still hides his feelings, mocking Eliza for wanting Freddy. The transformation of Eliza into a lady includes changes in address, pronunciation, and manners. Thus, the character of Eliza Doolittle comes across as being much more instrumental than fundamental. <clears throat> Question number two. In what way Pickering is a more influential teacher than Higgins? Henry, Big, Henry Higgins is a professor of phonetics who plays Pygmalion to Eliza Doolittle's Galatia. He is the author of Higgins' Universal Alphabet, believes in the concept like visible speech, 
and uses all manners of recording and, and photographic material to document his phonetic subject, reducing people and their dialects into what he sees as readily un under understandable units. He is an unconventional man who goes in the opposite direction from the rest of the society in most matters. Indeed, he is impatient with high society, forgetful in his public graces, and poorly considerate of normal society, social niceties. The only reason the world has not turned against him is because he is at heart a good and harmless person. His biggest fault is that he can be a bully. Colonel Pickering, the author of the spoken Sanskrit, is a much is, is a match for Higgins, although somewhat less obsessive in his passion for phonetics. But where Higgins is a boorish, careless bully, Pickering is always considerate and a genuinely gentleman. He says little of note in the play and appears most of all to be a civilized foil of foil to Higgins barefoot, um, barefoot crazy professor. He helps in the Eliza Doolittle experiment by making a wager of it, saying he will he will cover the cost of the ex experiment if Higgins does indeed make convincing duchess of her. However, while Higgins only manages to teach Eliza pronunciation, it is Higgering, it is Pickering's throughout, it is Pickering's thoughtful treatment towards Eliza that teaches her to rip to respect herself. While both men contribute to Eliza's transformation, Pickering is the key. While Higgins teaches her to speak, this was only an acquired skill, just like learning to dance in the fashionable way. As he says, her real education began with Pickering calling her Miss Doolittle on her first way at Wimpole Street. She, explain, she explains, that was the beginning of self-respect for me. Throughout the experiment, Pickering treats her as something better than a scullery maid, in contrast to Higgins, who continues to regard her as a low-class flower girl. To Eliza, being treated as a lady was essential to her belief that she could become just that. As she says, the difference between a lady and a flower girl is not how she behaves, but how she is treated. She rose to meet Pickering's perception of her and, and learned from him appropriate manners and behavior, something she never could have ever learned from Higgins. Without Pickering, Eliza would have remained in her habits and self-perception a member of the lower class while dressing and speaking beautifully. Question number three, Pygmalion is a coming of age story of Eliza, elaborate. The story of Pygmalion takes place in London. The first act opens in Covert Garden at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. Then it moves to London slum locality. The second act takes place in, at the residence of Professor Higgins on Wimple Street. The third act takes place in the uh, Chalicea uh, Emb Embankment, a fashionable locality in London. Then it moves to a foreign embassy in London. The action further takes place in the localities of London, uh, Cavendish Square, Hanover Square, and Wimbledon Common. Step by step, as the play progresses, Eliza grows a, or is pushed from being a squashed cabbage leaf of a girl to becoming a fully developed person with her own mind. She, she comes to Higgins as an ignorant, unrefined girl with a spark of hope for bettering herself. She's a raw material in, her, in his hands, dependent upon him for everything. He must tell her how to speak, how to dress, and how to behave. Pickering's kindness and respect shows, show her that she's more than her poverty, physical appearance, and curbstone English imply. Step by step, the play progresses. Eliza grows or is pushed from being a squashed cabbage girl. Okay, moving further. However, Eliza continues to submissively look to Higgins, her creator, for approval and for proof of her evolving identity as a lady. 
she does not trust that the transformation is more than superficial following her triumph at, at the ambassador's party she begins to understand that higgins is unable to see her as anything more than a squashed cabbage leaf no matter what she achieves something in her in in her realizes that she is and deserves to be treated like a lady in anger she leaves breaking free of a creator when she confronts him at his mother's home and the next day she has taken the final step in her transformation by moving beyond being higgins live doll doll she is now a self possessed woman she says she tells higgins i can do without you don't think i can't she knows she can now stand on her own the knowledge she acquired cannot be taken away she can use it and she says she tells higgins oh when i think of myself crawling under your feet and being trampled on and called names when all the time i had only to lift up my finger to be as as good as you i could kick myself at this point even higgins realizes that eliza has become a self directed human being in mind and spirit even so his descriptive terms of tower of strength and concert battleship are less than flattering now up next we have the questions from the speeches to remind you there are five speeches in your syllabus uh, b r ambedkar speech kiran bedi speech vivekananda speech priyanka chopra speech and greta thunberg speech so here you need to attempt two questions out of the four or the five questions each question is for two marks question number 1 explain the 12 rules of be- of being pri- 12 rules of priyanka chopra what priyanka chopra has mentioned here uh, i have just mentioned the 12 rules you can explain like the first rule is there is only one you let your dreams fly be ambitious hungry and greedy for your dreams don't give up on your dreams fail and fail then rise again be bold and take risk surround yourself by good people don't take yourself too seriously start giving be kind and loving you can't please everyone so stop always remember where you come from so you need to explain each rule mentioned by priyanka chopra explain the philosophy kiran bedi inherited from her parents kiran bedi followed her father and mother as a role model role models and they said life is an life is on an incline you either go up or you come down and the second thing which has stayed with her which become which became her philosophy of life which made all the differences is is 100 things happen in your life good or bad out of 190 are your creation they are good they are your creation enjoy it if they are bad they are your creation learn from it 10 are nature sent over which you can't do a thing it's like a death of a relative or a cyclone or a hurricane or an earthquake you can't do a thing about it you have got to just respond to the situation but that response comes out of those 90 points since she is a product of this philosophy of 90 by 10 and secondly life of life on an incline that's the way she grew up to be valuing what she got she is a product of opportunities rare opportunities in the 50s and the 60s which girl girls did not get where well, the girls did not get she was conscious of the fact that what her parents were giving her was something unique because all of her, her all because all of her best good school friends were getting doled up to get married with a lot of dowry and here she was with a tennis racket and going to school and doing all kinds of extracurricular activities she thought she must tell this this was a philosophy which kiran bedi kiran bedi uh, inherited from her parents question number 3 write a note on the two different set of polity mentioned by dr b r ambedkar dr b r ambedkar says that the three paragraphs the paragraph 3 says that in this country there shall be two different sets of polity one at the bottom 
the autonomous provinces or the states or such other areas as care to join a united india these autonomous units will have full powers they will have also residuary powers at the top and over the provincial units there will be a union government having certain subjects for for legislation for execution and for administration while reading this part of the resolution dr ambedkar says that it would be surprised as at the absence of any reference to the idea of grouping the provinces he never liked the idea of grouping he always liked a strong unit center much stronger that the center they had created under the government of india act of 1935 dr ambedkar emphasizes on the intermediate polity polity a sub federation between the union government and the provinces question number 4 my message is that we will be watching you explain the statement with reference to greta thunberg's un, uh, un speech answer following in her speech from the un climate change conference in 2019 there were there were multiple coordinated multi city protest involving over a million students each to avoid carbon intensive flying greta thunberg sailed uh, in a yacht to north america where she attended the 2019 un climate action summit her speech there in which she exclaimed how dare you was widely taken up by the press and the incorporated into music this speech was given on 23rd september 2019 at the united states united nations climate action summit in the in the in the new york as it seems from her words greta's purpose was to accuse the old generations of failing the younger ones and stealing the childhood with the empty phrases greta here refers to the aforementioned demonstration against the swedish government indeed as a form of protest she did not go to school sitting instead outside the outside the swedish uh, parliament with a sign saying uh, it's saying school strike for the climate she inspired similar protest in other countries involving a huge number of students greta explains that she ex- she explains that politicians often use a green progressive and en- environmental friendly languages language only to gain popularity however it must be said always re- rejecting environmental action and raising doubts about the fact that increasing temperatures are due to anthropic factors in addition a shift in the language of political debate generally de- determines a shift in policies because the consequent altered population's perception of a certain issue using simple and effective language thunberg is actually explain, explaining and positioning herself within a heavily debated issue of global environmental politics there are indeed two major positions in the debate one is dark green environmentalism that theorizes the overpopulation and manmade technology are to be blamed for a changing environment and light green environmentalism in which technology is seen as potential tool to revert the anthropic effects on climate change according to the second the prevalent view overpopulation is not an inner is not an issue per se the root of the problem is the condition of poverty and inequality the inequality that are widespread worldwide in other words for light green environmentalist the problem is the absence of technology rather than the technology itself greta clearly uh, places herself in the first group as a dark green activist she believes we need to pull the emergency brake um, meaning we should immediately stop polluting rather than looking for ways to contain the effects of pollution now the next question by swami vivekananda from the speech swami vivekananda hinduism taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance according to vivekananda a country's future depends on its people stating that uh, men making is my mission 
Religion plays a central role in this man making, stating to preach unto mankind the divine the divinity or divinity and how to make it manifest in every moment of life. Vivekananda was concerned that Hindu religion had been turned into a kitchen religion and don't touch me religion. He referred to the scriptures to show that the divine, the absolute, exists within all human beings regardless of social status and caste. As Swami Vivekananda says, I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only in universal toleration, but we accept all religions as true. I am proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the, the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. So these were the questions from the play as well as from the speeches 40 marks 30 marks refers to the play and the 10 marks refers to the uh, speeches now we have the questions from section b where you need to prepare the powerpoint presentation on the given topic there will be there will be two topics you need to you can select any one topic each topic is for five marks so generally how to prepare the ppt how you prepare the powerpoint presentation on the desktop here you need to prepare the slides the content you need to fix into the slides, slide one, slide two. You can look at the sample on your screen here. And the question, negative effects of mass media on students. So slide one, the topic presented by slide two, you can divide your sub themes. Then slide three, if possible, you can also draw some images which can give more uh, overview or more uh, impact on a presentation. Then slide five, slide six. I have prepared separate video video on how to prepare PowerPoint presentation slides and the disc and the link is already given in the description box. Then again, the next question, yoga for physical and mental wellness, prepare presentation. So you can prepare the slide, slide one, slide two, slide three, four, five. Next question you have here, write the paragraph on the given topics. This question is for five marks. You need to write and the topics will be mentioned and you need to write the answer in a very simple, uh, simple language without any grammatical error. So I have already mentioned the answer on the screen. You can go through the answer. So topics which have been given in this question paper, your childhood and the impact it will bear on your future. And the next topic, sports play a vital role in life. You can go through the answer. Now, the most important question, business correspondence. You have four types of four or the five types of letters here. Let me tell you the letter writing here. Letter of inquiry, order letters, letter of complaint and reply to the complaint. So you have a question. You need, you need to attend any one, one letter out of the two letters. Draft a letter of inquiry about the host about the hostel fees and the facilities in your college. So the format, sender's address, date, receiver's address, and then dear sir, <clears throat> subject, body of the letter, thank you, and complimentary close with signature. You can go through the letter. Then another letter we have, write a letter to Karnataka Carpentry House to place an order. It's a letter of order. Again, Sender's address, date, receiver's address, salutation, subject, body of the letter, thank you, note, complimentary close and signature. I have prepared, uh, I have already done a separate video on this topic, letter writing and the link could, uh, you can go through the link in the description box. Next, you have here advertisement. You are the owner of Sunshine Builders. Write a newspaper advertisement about three or two BHK flat available for sale. So this question is in the option, either the advertisement or the brochure writing. So when you are writing advertisement, you need to give the information that who is a writer and uh, the brief information about three, three BHK, the four BHK for sale and the brief description about the advertisement as well as the contact number if possible if you want to draw the any of the picture you can draw the picture you can go through this sample answer then in option to this you have poster writing or brochure writing 
design a poster to create awareness about the benefits of electric vehicles so this is more this is a question where you can ref, you can show your creativity you can draw any image and you can describe it better to write in the key points i have taken here two posters uh, from google uh, i downloaded from internet and um, i have just pasted here you can go through its these are the specimen answers your creativity has no end so this is how you can write the posters you can write the advertisement so dear friends this is how you can go through this model question paper and this model question paper will definitely help you to get an idea that how will the questions appear in your main examination and uh, you for each uh, for the play i have prepared the separate video you can go through the link in my description box for each of the topics like the play pygmalion uh, all the speeches uh, videos links um, that presentation links present presentation skills links uh, brochure writing advertisement writing all the links of each and every questions separate video you can go through in my description box of this of this video so i wish you good luck for the examination thank you so much dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukesh english at the rate of gmail.com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again